at Raymond James Stadium here in Tampa. The scene a few moments ago, here it is. It's unlike any other in sport as both teams made their way out of the tunnel. These folks are fired up as their guys are ready to do battle between the New Orleans Saints and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The calendar has turned to December and we're in the home stretch now as we're underway in week 13. On the return, it's Ted Ginn Jr. And he'll take this across the 25. Couple days. yards up to the 27 yard line tackle but then quickly brought down it's a pickup of four and it'll bring up second down defensively here you're facing a top five team in terms of points scored in the nfl so when they're that high powered you've got to find a way to hold them under 20 because to me that's the magic number 20 points scored gives yourself your, you give yourself your best chance to win so if they're up around 24 28 30 they could be in some trouble and i think so because then you turn it into a shootout and that means your offense has to keep pace on second down, here's Breeze. And this is complete to Zach Miller. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Give him 10 yards on that one, and that'll earn him a fresh set of downs. Now a first down carry. It's Camara. And he'll be corralled out across midfield down to the 45. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time and another first down. So back-to-back -back big runs, picking apart this defense on the opening drive. I thought this was a passing rate. I thought this was the error we were in where the ball was always in the air, right? They didn't get the memo. They didn't get the memo, and I know this to be true. Offensive linemen still, to this day, they want to run the football. They want to fire out and hit people across the line of scrimmage, and they're clearing space. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. Working from the gun, it's Breeze. On the check down, he finds Camara. And this time, not quite to the 30. He'll be down at the 31-yard line. Seven yards there, good enough to move the sticks. And he is the NFC reigning offensive player of the week. You got to think, all the guys that take the field each and every week, that's that's not an easy award. Always has to feel good to grab. It has to feel great because it separates you, at least for a week, amongst your peers. And for him to separate again, he has to have the same type of a game. That means being explosive off the line of scrimmage and catching everything that comes his way. Maybe just a slight detour on what's been a strong drive here, second and 11. Breeze to throw on second down. Out of the backfield, that's complete to Kamara. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves the sticks. A first opportunity upcoming in the red zone for the Saints. First and 10 at the 19. Here's Breeze. Oh, a ball batted in the air, and now it's intercepted. Picked off at the 15. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Certainly not how they envisioned ending their opening drive here in the first quarter. Too many runs in this play. First quarter, first drive, first interception thrown. And that last one, that hurts. Following the interception, Winston. And he 
finds a man with a crossing route. And down he'll go at the 25. Give him nine there on the first down completion. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. To throw, Winston. Escaping the pressure running. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. For a big guy, Jameis sure can move. Did a nice job there, picking up the first down with his legs. Back-to-back go, -back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. First down, Winston. A dump underneath to Jones. And he will lose yardage back to the 34-yard line. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. Second and 12 after the first down pass play went backwards for two yards. From the shotgun, it's Winston. Evans has it left side. And they got it well across midfield down to the 40 before it's all said and done. A good pick up there, 26 yards. A couple of first downs have him to the 40 now on first and 10. On first and 10, Winston. And that is incomplete here. And that's one he's got to be happy to have back. There wasn't a hole open in the zone. You'd have to think on early downs like that first down there, need to be a little bit more careful. Yeah, fortunately for him, got a couple more downs to play with. So second down and 10, once again, they'll go from the 40. Now the first carry for Ronald Jones. And he only manages a couple here down to about the 38-yard line. Doubling this guy has to be a priority before moving up to the next level because the big fella, he just ate that one alive, just stuffed it. In fact, before the game, he was talking to us, and he's like, hey, these pants make me look fat? And we said, nah, man, you're just a whole lot of guy. He is a well over 300 pounds. He's a big man. He's got Evans. And he's going to get this down near the 20-yard line. 17 yards on the pick up there and also a first down. Let's go now. Let's go. Working out of the gun, Winston. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Buccaneers. O.J. Howard, his second touchdown on the season. And the Bucs have taken a first quarter lead. Extra point up and good by Catanzaro. And it's now a 7-0 game. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This one taken from the seventh. A bad return here he gets it out to the 25 yard line now after the completion we're going to get a timeout an injured player while the training staff takes a peek we'll take a break out onto the field comes new orleans and there are parts of their last drive they'd like to emulate and of course they'd like to forget the inning the interception but they did put together charles a nice sustained drive to get him down the field yeah and unfortunately for them the only thing that matters is part two right because once they threw the interception and finished off the drive, that does them no good to go back and say, well, you know, we had a good one going. Finish things off. That's the only way you can get it done. Now Breeze throwing on second down. Drops this off to Kamara out of the backfield. And he'll be taken down as that will take us to the end of the first quarter of play. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. Shotgun now for Breeze. That's complete to Meredith. And they work this well upfield across the 45. 
A good pick up there, a 22. Here we go. He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. 21, 21, 21. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot. And they connected there and picked up a first down. Looking for more there on first down, but this throw downfield incomplete. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Breeze on the draw, gives to Kamara. And very little running room there. He did get a couple up to the 49. Well, he hasn't made much of an impact in the running game thus far. And after that last run, not much is going to change in that area. He hasn't been able to get anything going, and really the offensive line not helping him much. Toward the sideline. Did he keep the feet in? Yes, he got them both down, says the side judge. And that's good enough for a first down. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Stop made there by Gerald McCoy. Early down stuff to put this offense in a precarious position. We know that securing the point of attack, especially against the big body guys in the middle of this D, has got to be priority one. From the gun, it's Breeze. To the right side, complete to Miller. And this time, not quite to the 30. It'll be down at the 31 yard line. That throw good for only a couple. It brings up third down. In search of eight yards on third down. They've already converted two of these on this drive. Two for two. Now Breeze. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, New Orleans. Traquan Smith with touchdown number eight on the year. And the Saints are within an extra point of tying this thing up. Morstead, the punter, out to kick it off. Jackson now to return. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that. They had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? I would think that they would because if they were confident enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they really look clueless. And that was amazing because that drive went and went. No adjustments and no big plays by the defense to knock the ball away. Here's second and 10 now from the 29. On second down, it's Jones. Across the 30 to the 31-yard line. Craig Robertson in on the stop. Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. 4C and completion on first down. Then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going at the quarterback in the expected passing situation. Let's go now. Right. On third down, Winston. Drops it to Jones in the flat. And he will be knocked down hard, but he will have the first down. It goes as a gain of eight, and it moves the chains. We always talk about having to read defenses and how complicated that is. Well, this was an excellent read. Read the pressure and got rid of the football before it even got to him for a nice game. And when they're blitzing like that, running back usually a good spot to go with a football? Without a doubt, because he's right in your sight line or he's near you. So you're able to just get it to him easily. And once he gets in space, that's usually a good matchup for him. They'll run it now out of the gun. And that one blown up quickly as he's going to be stopped before he could even get started. It's a loss of two, now third down. Perfectly designed blitz right there. They took that one from the grease board to the field because they were able to free up their linebacker to get into the backfield and spill the play. Right. 
Winston from the gun on third down. Now he's flushed out left. And that is incomplete. There defensively to break that one up, Ken Crawley. Well, that's a perfect example of how he was named NFC Defensive Player of the Week from last week's game. He is just all around the football right now, isn't he? That he is, and it's funny because I talked with the coaching staff about drills that they do in practice, and one of them is called matching hands. And as soon as that hand is launched by the quarterback, you throw up the opposite hand and match that hand with the QB, and oftentimes you're able to knock it away, as we just saw there. Now the Saints offense, they get ready to go back to work here. So Bree's going to lead the Saints up here first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. Bree's going to throw. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. And he gets it here to right around the 24 before he's out of bounds. A gain of four on the play, and it's a second down. Well, it's tough to be a defender in today's NFL because there's so many things to account for in today's passing game, including the back sneaking out of the backfield. Not quite as bad as a turkey bowl where you have the center eligible stuff, but still a lot of guys to account for. He got 29 yards that time. Two minutes to play here in the first half. We'll come back to Tampa after this timeout. Breeze leaves this one with Camara. And he's got this down to the 35. 12 more yards there and another first down. Another good run there for a guy who, remember, on Wednesday was named NFC Offensive Player of the Week for what he did a week ago. Yeah, and you know it takes some solid runs and some extra special ones in order to win that type of an award. I think he's locked in and wants to get it done a second time. And he'll toss this one incomplete. Seeing no options, he throws it away. They don't get the hook up there, but you really have to marvel at how precise he's been throwing the football these last couple weeks. Oh, that's the perfect word for it, precise. Because if you're at 70% or better two weeks in a row, you have a job as long as you want one in this league, won't you? I mean, let's face it's not just West Coast offense either. He's putting the ball downfield as well. He lost two there, and it's third down. The Saints on third down. A perfect three for three as they look to keep that streak going. This is third down and 12. Breeze now. Eluding the pressure right. He can run for it, and he will. It's a nine-yard pickup on the play, and it'll be fourth down. Well, partner, nothing comes open here, so he decides to escape out of there, and he doesn't pick up a first down, but he does gain additional yardage to set up a possible field goal attempt if they decide to go that route. And Lutz puts this one through. And they jump back in front here. It's 9-7. to seven. So that's a seven-play drive that ultimately stalls out there at the end. Yeah, things were a little leaky in the beginning on that drive, weren't they? But how about the front seven? As they got closer to their goal line, things stiffened a little bit, forced the field goal. Solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32-yard line. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. And hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys. Win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs. And that's what they need in order to not pump the ball again. They'll start the drive with a carry by Jones. And he'll get this one up to about the 39 here. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice solid gain. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fit and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. And this one caught by Cameron Bray. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. And now we won't see a play on first down. We're going to get a timeout instead as they stop it here with just under 40 ticks to go in this first half. Jameis now 7 of 10 here in this first half, and he's got a first and 10. Winston now from the 50. And Winston lost the football. The Bucs going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 33 seconds to go in the first half. On plays like this when the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back because... This is, this is the quarterback. The ball gets away from him. 
Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. But it looks like a Buccaneer was able to corral it. Yes, the Bucs have it. Tampa Bay keeps the possession. And now the Saints are going to take a timeout on defense. As they'll stop it with 27 seconds remaining here in the second quarter. Need something from deep in the bag of tricks here after first and second down went backwards. It's third and very long. To the air again with Winston. And the pressure gets to him again. And the Saints signal for another timeout. As it comes with 22 seconds to go here in half number one. And this is a way. It's a high kick, and he got all of it. He's going to field this at the four. A terrific return there. 27 yards all told. And control of the football, switching hands with very little time remaining until the half. Back out onto the field now comes the New Orleans offense. And from this spot in the field with the clock where it's at, you think we're just going to see a knee and that's it? And I think in this situation, that's the proper play. But we do know there's some risk takers out there that may want to take one more shot before the clock runs out. And we're going to get a timeout with two seconds remaining in the second quarter. A final shot before half for Breeze. And his throw is going to be incomplete. So we have reached halftime with the visiting Saints out on top. As we send you a stone throw away across I-4 to Orlando. There standing by is Jonathan Coachman, ready with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach, set now to go for the third quarter. The Saints have the lead and set to receive the kick. Out come the Buccaneers. They'll have it first to start in the third quarter. They're close, close game, but they're going to need to do a little bit better probably here in half two, no? I would agree with that totally. I would guess it in the locker room. They talked about cleaning up some of the errors, but overall I think they wanted to be positive with them. Guys, we're right there. Just not playing as well as we need to. Let's pick it up, and we still have a chance to win this game. Yeah, they do. We'll see if they can pick it up. They had the run for no gain. Now they'll try again from the 25 on second and 10. They keep it on the ground, but this time it's Murray. And again, he's going to be stopped up right at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the run there, and now they'll be looking at a third down. Big play coming up. Here's third and 10. I would expect to see some pressure here. And the blitz does come. And he's got it. Got his man on the end route. Complete. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. They do get nine, but it leads to fourth down. Here's Brian Anger now as he's on to punt for Tampa Bay. Taking it about the 16. 21 yards. Well done on the return. And the Saints will take over with a first down and 10. So Bree's going to lead the Saints up here, first and 10 at their 38. Three. Now Bree's. Throw left side taken in by Miller. And he'll get up to the 43-yard line. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he get a good head of steam going. Catch here, left side, Thomas. Touchdown, New Orleans. Michael Thomas, his sixth touchdown of the season. And the Saints now add six to their lead. And correct me if I'm wrong, that was just a simple fly route, wasn't it? No, there's nothing to correct at all. You've got it down pat. And I just remember as a player, when I'd be in practice sessions, and I'd hear nine from the receivers, that meant fly route, go, uh-oh, look out. <laughs> that was the nine, and he just kept going all the way into the end zone for the touchdown. 
And Tampa Bay trots out there now. And right now, these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting, because three straight drives have ended with him punting the football away. Yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. They're throwing to start the drive, but that one incomplete. We saw this a lot in the first half, and it continues. These receivers just not able to get much separation. So that means they have to win the 50-50 balls. They've got to go up with the defender and find a way to start coming down with them. And this time, contact and another in. Looking for Evans, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Von Bell. And a great return as they're finally able to take him down. He has just been a load for opposing offenses to account for. Now eight interceptions on the year. I love that number because I always think of center field. You know, when I hear eight, because that's the position you write in the scorecard in baseball. And what a good spot. And he's got him. It's caught in the end zone. Touchdown, New Orleans. Traquan Smith, his second touchdown of the game and his ninth on the year. And the Saints take advantage of field position on the turnover to cash in for six. Morstead, the punter, out to kick it off. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. Now the Buccaneers offensive unit back out on the field. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive or no? You just throw that out the window. I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. They want to attack. We'll see how they attack them here. And Winston lost the football. But it looks like a Buccaneer was able to corral it. Yes, the Bucs have it. Tampa Bay keeps the possession. But call it luck or skill, whatever the case is, they're feeling good about just keeping the football there. Yeah, the biggest thing that they're calling it now, our ball. <laughs> I mean, they don't care if it was luck or skill. Boy, the panic that jumps up in your chest when that ball's on the ground. Whether you get it or your teammate gets it, just as long as you maintain possession, that's all you're looking for. And they pick up 25 as they convert on third. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Winston now to throw on first down. And break, the tight end's got it. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Back-to-back -back nice gains. That one for 14 yards and another first. Winston now six for six since coming back out of the locker room. It's first and ten. From the gun, Winston. And Blake has it over the middle. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. A good pick up there, a 22. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players. Somehow came back to football. That's really good for the game of football. You get better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination. Guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. Another nice gain. 13 yards that time and another first down. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. A dump underneath to Jones. And he'll get it here to the 10-yard line. It'll be a three-yard gain, and it'll make it second down. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. That first down completion only netted him three, second and seven. Jameis again. And he's into the end zone for a Tampa Bay touchdown. Cameron Bray, his third touchdown now on the year. And the Bucs are able to close the gap just a bit. Extra point good by Catanzaro. And the lead down to 10, 24-14. So the lead back down to 10 as things get a little more interesting, and the kick is away. 
This will be fielded at the eight. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. And for them, a touchdown their last go-around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. And he's able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. Yeah, give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. Second and six, just inside the 30. Whoa, whoa. Hey. Breeze to throw on second down. He'll air it out deep for Thomas. And he fires one that's intercepted. Picked off by M.J. Stewart. defense has athleticism spots like that for this right i love the way that you spotlighted the athleticism because you and i both know the best athletes on the field they play on defense oh, oh, oh. i don't know i was a kicker you got to remember that now come on come on fine this one taken from the seven and nice work on the return as they'll start their drive just past the 30 yard line out onto the field comes New Orleans. And they gave up the pick six. And now they'll be looking to right the ship here. Now, as a quarterback, are you a little more cautious this go around? You should be, <laughs> just because after what you gave up. But you can't be so cautious as to just really take things in. And now you're not going to play loose enough to give your team a chance to score. But you still have to be careful because those defensive guys, I know the reputation defense guys can't catch. All evidence to the contrary on that last possession, though. It's a loss of four there, bringing up second down. I think it's pretty evident we can say what a difference a week makes. Last week, he ran pretty much wild, didn't he? Did pretty much what he wanted to do. But this one, they've stopped him cold. That, to me, that's good scouting and even better execution. Yeah, and they stopped him behind the line right there. They obviously watched the tape a few times and made some adjustments. Over the middle to Smith. The reception good for seven. It's third down. Back now in Tampa. It's been a very hotly contested game to this point. Just a field goal separating these two teams as we get set for the fourth quarter. The Saints on third down. They've been good. Three for four thus far. This is third and seven. Working from the gun. It's Breeze. And look at this. They get the turnover they needed. It's intercepted. Picked up by M.J. Stewart. And he will score. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. This game, it's been defensively oriented on both sides. So I guess it stands to reason that the play of the game comes on defense. So it's my kind of game. You know that. Right. Anytime we have a right. defensive battle, but that, as you said, it stands to reason that's the way the game tilted. Someone had to make a big play, and the way the defenses were dominating, that's exactly what we got. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. And now the Saints get set to trot out there. And fresh off the pick six, they've got to forget about that quickly. In this case now, the guy throwing the ball, he's got to be like what we talked about with defensive backs who get beat for a long touchdown. Short-term memory. And a loose football. Breeze now perfect since the second half started. Seven of seven. It's first and ten. Now Breeze. Throw left side complete. It's Carr. And he'll get up to the 43-yard line. A gain of six there on first. 
I always laugh when people say, what's the toughest route to defend? And I'm like, any of them, especially if it's a good receiver, that makes things very difficult. But when you're running a drag route, something short, shallow, going through defenders, using guys almost as, as screens in order to get open, that makes things tough for guys trying to get to the football. Nine yards on the pick up there, and it keeps the drive alive. So from Buccaneer territory now, it's first and 10 at the 49-yard line. Again, they'll throw with Breeze. On the right side, this is Miller. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. Well, this is how you shake the thoughts of that interception on the last drive. You come out and start this one four for four. And watching him throw it around with that type of confidence reminds me of a guy I played with way back when who told me, I don't care if I throw ten interceptions in a row. I'm going to stay confident and keep flinging it. I'll just figure there's something wrong with the football. And he'll be brought down at about the 42. Kendall Beckwith on the stop. He continues to struggle to find a crease to break off a big one and might need to just put that aside and just try and ram his way forward and get what he can. Bree's going to try and throw on third down. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back. Complete. And they pick up the first down there with a gain of four. There are a lot of tough routes to try and cover. When you see a runner come out of the backfield and run this angle route, looks like they're going to the flat, and then they put their foot in the ground and cut back sharply inside, not easily covered. And then when they catch it, good momentum built up by them as well. And able to pick up the first. So they took a shot on first down but couldn't connect. Now a throw to the end zone on first down, but it winds up incomplete. They work again from the 38 on second and 10. On second down, Camara. It's a gain of about three, but it's going to leave them with third and still seven yards to go. Well, they certainly had success throwing the ball on this drive and not as much running it as we just saw once again on that last play, stopped after a very short game. But I wouldn't abandon the run totally because otherwise, pass rushers just tee off on your quarterback. It makes it very, very difficult for him in that situation. Breeze now to throw. And incomplete. He can't hang on. Would have been a nice catch. Instead, it brings up a fourth down. There's definitely contact there, but it's the fourth quarter of a kind of tight game, and sometimes officials just say, let them play. Kind of like your mom used to, you and your brothers, just take the broom to you and send you out to the backyard and tell you to settle it yourselves. <laughs> I like that, yeah. There was contact. I don't know, like he said, enough to warrant the flag. It was close, though. Now they go for it on fourth, but this one is going to wind up incomplete. Well, you feel the excitement build on those fourth down plays. Defense has to stay out there, but for the offense, when that thing doesn't work out, such disappointment. It can absolutely be a deflator, but how about the defensive guys? If they stop you on fourth down, they are absolutely elevated going to their bench. They're elevated now. Big stop on fourth down. A loss of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. Again, it's Jones. And hard running's going to get him over the 40 to the 42. Eight yards there on the carry, and now they're left with a much more manageable third and three. As big of a play as we've had in this one so far. This is third and three. Working out of the gun, Winston. No, oh, they would have gotten the conversion if he could hold on. Instead, the drop means it'll be fourth down. Didn't have a receiver open downfield, and as it turned out, couldn't even find his outlet, man, because of the coverage. It was way too tight. Unable to find anyone open. Yeah, that is much too long. That's into the end zone for a touchback. The Saints coming out now to take the field. They had a great drive going last time. They were moving the ball, and then all of a sudden it just stalled out. So we'll see what they can do here, Charles. And it's always easy to second guess when you don't get it on a fourth down try. But they had to like the feeling that they had going out offense. They want to 
want to continue to see if they can capture that again on this drive and maybe get in the same position. Yeah, and that's, I mean, like I said, they were moving the football. It's not like they went four and out, so I don't think it's a, a deal where the offense doesn't have confidence. No, I agree with you totally on that one. If, that, if anything, they may have gained more confidence. Okay, they stopped us once. That's all right. Let's keep moving it. Make them do it again. Time for a break. We'll come back for the electrifying conclusion after this. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. On first down, Breeze. And he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. Noah Spence in there to take him down and the clock will roll gotta assume this defense will be charging again here it's second and 15. he'll look to throw smith catches left side and he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. eight yards on the completion but now they face third down they'll get to the line here but remember it's also third down Back to throw. That's incomplete, but there is a flag down. So hang on. A big call coming on third down. So they will accept the penalty and move forward. And the penalty makes this a much more manageable third down. Third and two. They'll look to throw. Oh, there's that man again. It's complete. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. Give him 12 yards on that one. It earns him a fresh set of downs. He's back to throw. Over the middle, that's caught by Meredith. And he takes it all the way down to the three. A big-time play there for New Orleans. 41 yards. Well, I guess at the very least, they got the tackle from keeping him out of the end zone. Yeah, you're looking for that silver lining, aren't you? But guess what? Everything changes now after that big play. They've got a chance to strike. He goes underneath to Ingram. Now, before this second down play, we'll get whistles and a timeout. As it'll come with 36 seconds to go in half number two. So they're backed up to the three-yard line, second and goal. They'll run it with Kamara. And he'll get him a bit closer as he's down to the two-yard line. And now the Bucs decided to take a timeout defensively. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. A lot of tired bodies on that field. But this is a big play, third and goal. Back to throw. Oh, no, he lost the football. And the Buccaneers have it. He let one slip away last week as well, so now two fumbles lost in as many weeks. Well, we were out of practice, and we watched him work. And what did his quarterback coach talk about all week? Being a two-hand monster. And we looked at each other, two-hand Oh, I get it, two-hand monster. Both hands on the football, taking care of it, putting it away so the ball doesn't get dropped. And yeah, the Saints signal for another timeout as he'll stop it with 25 ticks remaining on the clock. And they will take a knee here. So time to start going in the other direction as they come up now third and long. A lot of scoring. There's no doubt about that in this one, Charles. Points, they were not at a premium. They were pretty easy to come by. <laughs> they were, but it was fun, wasn't it? Because both teams finding ways to click. And you know people who love this game. They also love baseball games that are 14 to 11 with three or four home runs mixed in. So for the Bucs, it's an important win for their playoff hopes as they move to 8-4. and four. And they will hit the road next week for a date with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Meanwhile, for the Saints, it's a loss that could wind up costing them a first-round bye as they dip to 9-3. and three. And they'll be at home next week for a date with the Houston Texans.
So for our entire crew, alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time.